Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's Farmcast. We'll discuss today another five drug of choice, one anti-cancer drug and few questions which are asked by students like uh, which is more important in revision, notes or questions. Right, so partially I had answered it earlier. Today we'll again I'll repeat the solution to this. And another doubt which was asked is uh, I have done only retrograde study from QBank, no videos or notes and uh, I'm not able to increase my score. So what should I do? So I'll discuss that at last. Let us straight away begin with our drugs of choice guys. Today the first one is gonorrhea. Now remember single drug of choice. If they ask you for gonorrhea, all of you know the answer would be the answer would be ceftriaxone. As I've told you repeatedly for most gram negatives, the drug of choice is ceftriaxone. But remember what has uh, been seen in the recent times that there has been an increasing trend of resistance to ceftriaxone. So monotherapy is not recommended nowadays. It is recommended that you combine another antibiotic, right? So the, another antibiotic is a protein synthesis inhibitor. It can be either azithromycin or doxycycline. Now this will solve two purpose. One purpose is to prevent resistance to ceftriaxone. Second purpose is it can even cover chlamydia, right? Because you know, there can be co-association of gonorrhea with chlamydia and vice versa. So we'll be covering both gonorrhea and chlamydia. Right guys, so gonorrhea, drug of choice, ceftriaxone, treatment of choice, ceftriaxone plus azithromycin or toxicycline. Moving on to the second disorder for today guys, it is gout. And all of you know the acute gout, the drug of choice is endomethacin. An alternative to endomethacin is colchicin. Now if the patient does not respond to these drugs, uh, my second line would be steroids. I can also use steroids in gout. So there is treatment of acute gout. And uh, chronic gout, guys, if they ask you, all of you know, chronic gout has been asked many times. The drug of choice is allopurinol, right? Allopurinol. And if the patient does not respond to allopurinol, what I do is I combine a uricosuric agent, like, like uh, sulfinpyrazone or probenecid or benzbromerone. These are uricosuric agents. Now, even if even after combining, they do not respond, then uh, my last resort would be an enzyme, right? Uricase analogs like pagloticase, they are reserved for treatment of uh, resistant gout that is not responding to any other drugs. Second scenario is I'm using allopurinol. Patient is responsive to allopurinol, but he develops hypersensitivity, right? You know, that is the most common side effect of allopurinol. In that case, what should I do? So guys, in case there is allopurinol hypersensitivity, I can switch from allopurinol to oxypurinol, right? It's, a, it's an orphan drug reserved for treatment of gout in allopurinol hypersensitivity. So that's treatment of gout, guys. Now moving on to the third disorder for today, that is granuloma inguinal, and which is caused by clapsial, clapsial granulomatis and you know, it is associated with genital ulcers. Now for granuloma inguinal, guys, the drug of choice is doxycycline, single best drug of choice. Alternatives are there, of course like cotrimoxazole, azithromycin can also be used in granuloma inguinal. Now the fourth disorder for today, guys, it is Graves disease. And Graves disease or hyperthyroidism, all of you know, the overall drug of choice is methimazole. But pregnancy, if they ask you, then guys, first trimester, I prefer propyl thioracil because it is not teratogenic, whereas methimazole is. Right, but second and third trimester, I prefer methimazole because I'm not worried about teratogenicity in second and third trimester. Rather, I'm worried about hepatotoxicity of propyl thioracil. Now, sometimes students, they get confused. What if trimester is not mentioned? Yes, then your answer would be propyl thioracil because when trimester is not mentioned, they actually mean first trimester where the risk of teratogenicity is maximum, right? Now, guys, moving on to the last disorder for today. That is hairy cell leukemia. I guess hairy cell leukemia has been asked in your exams. The drug of choice is cladribine, and this is a purine analog. Another purine analog can be used. It is an alternative to cladribine, that is pantostatin. So I can use either cladribine or pantostatin to begin with treatment of hairy cell leukemia. Drug of choice is cladribine. Right, so initial treatment, induction. Whereas for consolidation phase, when I stop cladribine or pantostatin, I can start a rituximab. So rituximab can be used for consolidation in hairy cell leukemia. Drug of choice, they ask you, cladribine is the answer. And remember one important fact about cladribine, it is an anti-cancer drug that is also given by continuous intravenous infusion 
just like cytarabine or rrc right guys so that's all for the drug of choice section today and now let's move on to one anti cancer drug i'll discuss today so it's not one anti cancer drug it's a class and these are vegf inhibitor vascular endothelial growth factor inhibitor so there are two drugs that inhibit the factor itself these are bevacizumab and ranibizumab and there is a drug that blocks vegf receptor vegfr that is ramucirumab so i can either block the factor the ligand itself that is vegf or i can block the receptor for vegf that is vegfr that is called as ramucirumab so bevacizumab guys uh, you know these are inhibitors of vascular endothelial growth factor which means what um they would be used in highly vascular tumor so bevacizumab is drug of choice for renal cell carcinoma and it can also be used in colorectal carcinoma right ranibizumab on the other hand it is used for choroidal neovascularization it is also used in diabetic retinopathy because you know diabetic retinopathy the primary pathophysiology is neovascularization and the vegfr inhibitor ramucirumab it has been approved for treatment of gastric cancer now guys here uses are not much important except for the uses of bevacizumab and ranibizumab the names are important right which is an inhibitor of vegf or vegfr one important side effect of these drugs you have to remember that these inhibitors of vegf or vegfr they will cause delayed wound healing right because vascularization is important for wound healing so that's all for today guys in the section of drugs now we have come to the last section where i discuss your queries and one query that was asked by student is which is more important in revision notes or q bank guys a simple answer is both both are Im- important and though it differs from person to person as to how much time one allocates to q bank and how much time one allocates to notes now if you ask me what i have seen is some students they are quite bullish about uh, your q bank some are quite bullish about notes though majority of students they are more bullish about the notes so right? they spend more time with notes because you know even myself i i i'm i was also more comfortable with giving more time to notes than q bank and because that gives a sense of confidence right that you are uh, you are able to remember all those things which are present in your notes and and you can solve new questions as well but mind it q bank practice is also important during revision because your exam is uh, mcq based so you need that continuous practice right guys so nevertheless guys is up to you both are important you can go for 60 40 or 40 60 it depends upon your own preference with with what you are more comfortable with do i told you majority of the students <clears throat> majority of the students they are more comfortable with notes right second question guys um, a student had asked sir i have done only retrograde study from q bank and i have not uh, studied any videos through videos or notes but now i'm not able to score well what to do guys if you will ask me i was never a huge fan of retrograde study right but i had to study one subject retrograde that is pediatrics and it is because i fell ill and i could not attend the peds class so i did not have any notes and at that time we did not have any videos forget about those right so <clears throat> what i had to do is that peds subject i had to go retrograde and then after studying retrograde what i used to do is i used to find out all the important points in the explanation and i used to write them down in the pasted paper the yellow color pasted paper and i used to paste them on the wall so i had a, 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 almost around two chart papers which were uh, full with the notes of pediatric so that is what i did myself so that i had something to revise guys you need to make some notes so that you can revise otherwise just solving question and going through the explanation they will evaporate so what ne- you need to do is you need to have some stuff through which you can revise and uh, though there are students they only do q bank and they fare well but i guess that is more applicable in case you have studied well during your undergraduate period and you have gone through standard textbooks make your own notes then you can go with only q bank but you know those percentage of student is very very less so most of us guys we need to rely more on the notes so now for for you now the time is less you cannot do much but still you can make some important notes of those uh, mcq points which you go through stick it on your wall and keep on revising so guys that's all for today's farm cast if you have similar kind of doubts you can always let me know in the comment box and i'll try to include your doubts in one of my farm casts 
So guys, take care. Bye-bye. All the best. This was Dr. Ranjan.